Hey, I'm Steve Mignotti here in El Paso, Texas at MSD Performance. Now, by now, we all know about how the Atomic EFI is a great way to enjoy the benefits of modern EFI on a car that was otherwise equipped with a square bore carburetor. Installs in one day, improves fuel economy, performance, tip-in, drivability, all of those things. But did you know that every Atomic EFI has a number of optional features that you can access, one of which is the ability to tailor your ignition timing curve to suit your particular vehicle combination. So whether you have a tight converter or a loose one, radical gears or mild ones, a heavy car, a light one, or a compression or cam changes, you can actually manipulate the timing curve to maximize performance with your car. But before we can do that, there are a few minor things we have to do. First off, we've got to be sure we're using a CD style ignition, like an MSD6 series, or a street fire, and we have to be able to lock out the mechanical advance from the distributor. We also need a two-piece distributor rotor and a high-quality timing line. Let's get started. Now, because we have to remove the distributor from the engine, before we yank it, we want to do something. Make sure that your timing marks on your balancer and your tab are accurate. Bring the engine around to number one, top dead center firing. Remove the cap, note where the rotor's pointing, and mark that position. It'll save you a lot of grief when you put the distributor back in the engine. It'll fire it up. Now, modifying the distributor is a straightforward process which goes like this. The first thing you want to do is remove the springs and the weights, store them or discard them. You choose. Uh, and then next, using a small wrench, loosen the bolt. That will allow you to remove the stop bushing. With the mechanical advance components stripped away, we now are ready to remove the distributor drive gear. That will involve pressing the roll pin out and then pulling the gear off the shaft. With the gear removed, we can now pull the shaft out of the housing about an inch. No need to take it all apart. Once we've done that, we can rotate the shaft, re-index it against the advance plate, make sure that it's into the round hole. That will immobilize the assembly, and we can reinstall the nut. The final step is simply reinstalling the gear and making sure that you install the roll pin properly. With the mechanical timing advance locked out, now we can install the two-piece adjustable rotor. Now we have to use this because it allows us to compensate for timing changes. The two-piece rotor will allow us to compensate for changes needed by the computer to operate the engine properly. Now, we're, our Pontiac has a counterclockwise distributor rotation. If you're working on a Chevy, that's clockwise. So make sure you know what the normal distributor rotation is for your particular engine. Again, we're going counterclockwise in our Pontiac. So we'll install the top part of our two-piece rotor so that we have 15 degrees of advance opposite to normal distributor rotation. Okay, now that the distributor is reconfigured, we can install it back in the motor. The locked out distributor is reinstalled in the motor, and I did make sure I didn't bump the engine or disturb the orientation of the rotor. Really important, it'll help with the fire right up. I have also installed the 6AL unit on the firewall and made sure that the firing order of the spark plug wires is correct. Really important. Check yours too. Double check it, in fact. The wiring is what we do next. It's a simple matter of running the mag pickup wire from the distributor to the Atomic. It's a red two-pin wire. And then running from the Atomic to the MSD6AL, it's a yellow wire which merges to the white wire on the MSD6AL. With the wiring connections made, now we can break out the timing light and the handheld controller. We're going to do this without the engine running, and we're going to establish baseline numbers for initial and total timing. For the initial on our car, we're going to go with 12 degrees at 900 RPM, and for total timing, we're going to go with 35 degrees at 2500 RPM. These are good, basic, safe numbers to start with. You might find that your combination wants a little more or a little less, but those are good numbers for our Pontiac motor. Okay, now that we've established baseline timing for the initial and total, what we now do is go back into the computer and block out the timing function. The reason for that is we're going to start the engine in a moment and use our timing light to establish 15 degrees before top dead center as seen on the timing tab. We don't want the atomic interfering with that process. So again, we're going to lock this out temporarily. The 
those are the basics on how to utilize the ignition timing control features of the atomic EFI. And we can also simulate vacuum advance because of the MAP sensor in the throttle body. Now, of course, vacuum advance is something that improves low speed fuel economy in traffic. It starts the fire burning a little bit sooner and again, improves drivability. And yes, the atomic EFI has a special screen. Scroll down to that. You can actually establish vacuum advance simulations for better fuel economy. Now, keep in mind, no two engine combinations are the same. So you're going to want to do fine tuning to make sure that your car is maximized utilizing the timing controls inside the Atomic. Now you're ready to go out and enjoy the full benefit of electronically controlled ignition timing thanks to the Atomic EFI. You don't have to deal with springs, weights, or bushings ever again.